So EGPRD stands for the European Joint Programme on Rare Diseases, uh, which is a project that is being co-financed by the European Commission and 26 uh, European countries, as well as UK, Canada, Turkey and Israel. And the objective of this program is really to uh, create the rare diseases research ecosystem to accelerate research on rare diseases. Within the EJPRD, we have funders, we have policymakers with the ministries, we have hospitals, we have clinicians, researchers, research institutes, as well as patient organizations and the research infrastructures that are working under one single umbrella in the EJPRD. And that's how we are trying to accelerate the, the whole value chain from the diagnosis to the therapy development. We have about 7,000 rare diseases or maybe even more. For, for about 96%, 95%, there is no treatment at all. And the support that the EGPRD can give is a networking support scheme in which there is uh, funding to organize networking events in which research can be discussed or new research can be planned. That is one of the support systems of the EGPRD. There's a lot of uh, preclinical and basic research going on that will enable better therapy development and uh, new ways to achieve better diagnostics. The next step that we also have is then to go into more applied research and for this we have the rare disease research challenges where we actually defined challenges together with the industry sponsors and then to fund projects with those sponsors together that we really have concrete solutions in the end for the patients. The nature of, of the research process, it's very long. It takes a very long time and a lot of money to develop an understanding of a disease and then make a new medicine for it. So what we call the translational uh, gap or the value of death, there, there is a, not sufficient funding and little expertise to be able to support that process. But it's very important if we want to innovate for rare disease patients. So when you're supporting them in the basic research to make sure that you, we give them the tools, but also the guidance and monitoring necessary to do really robust, very patient and outcome-centric research. And then to be able to help support when they have good data, to find the, the, the avenues and the resources to take that concept further towards implementation, towards a new medicine or a new diagnostic. So both uh, looking forward in time, uh, while planning from the patient at the end and, and reverse planning from there. So I think that capturing data in registries is absolutely essential for meaningful clinical research. We need um, data on the clinical aspects of the patient's laboratory data, imaging information, uh, genetic information, and this is what we are trying to do in the EJPRD, and we are trying to link registries, databases from different sources covering different diseases to make them available um, for clinical research. We are building interoperability between different systems using different standards. And in the genomic space, there is a, a huge initiative that is a Genetic Alliance for Genomics and Health, GA4GH. So they are setting uh, standards for sharing data on genomics and the standards we are used are fully interoperable with the, theirs. We will be in position to connect purely genomic data with other types of data that are not using those standards. And that will make a big difference because we have the power to influence uh, the, the entire sector. The needs of this population with rare, with rare diseases for specific clinical trials is a major point that we tackle. Sometimes we have diseases with one or two patients affected in the world. So the classical way of performing clinical trials on big cohorts cannot apply. So we should find the specific methodologies to use what we developed in EJPRD to use what other developed in a program and to put all of this together in order for a better diagnosis of the disease and the treatment that should be accessible and available all over the world for every single patient with a rare disease.
Education is really a core component of the value chain uh, to push for more diagnosis and treatments for patients. So for us, it's really important as a community to uh, foster more patient partnerships, meaning more uh, patients being involved in co-creating research projects, not only because it's a question of equity, but it's, it's also a question of uh, efficiency. And if we want our research to be beneficial uh, to the patients, we need to involve patients from the biomedical research stages until uh, the clinical stages. The field is relatively novel and rapidly expanding with many intersections with other innovative fields as personalized medicine and digital technologies. And there is no one dedicated professional organization. And finally, there is a huge lack of awareness about existing educational resources and there are some remaining geographic inequities in rare disease education provision. So with a powerful input of the whole EGPRD ecosystem, we were able to address all of these challenges. And EGPRD acts as a major contributor, direct provider, and collaborator in education and training activities and ensure ecosystem building and advisory role for policy and decision making. Today, we have a lot of new advancements there artificial intelligence, we are trying to connect the data from the healthcare systems to the research data and genetic, for example, therapies development, but also the new models for the creation of the therapies for rare diseases um, to be able to serve every patient uh, in the same way as the ones that have more common diseases. And we are also bringing the national capacities under the umbrella of the Future Rare Diseases Partnership to really help also to exploit what is already being done for rare diseases at the national level into the European and international scale.